Howdy photographers, in this video tutorial I'm going to show you a few tricks using layers in On1 Photo Raw 2025. I am going to be using landscape photos and these photos will be available to download on my website in raw format. So make sure to check the description below. Anyways, this photo I took in Peru in the Corderia Blanca. It's called the Laguna Perón or Lake Perón. It's about 4800 meters above sea level. You can notice the image is soft and is a little bit underexposed. So we'll try to get that corrected. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here and take a look at the image. And you can see it's not that sharp. So I'm going to go to the develop panel, go to noise and sharpening. And I'm going to use both no noise AI and tack sharp AI. So I'll just select both and I'll click apply. It'll take a few seconds to process, but you can see it's already sharpening the edges. There is a little bit of artifacting going on, but you can't notice that once you zoom out. So once I zoom out, it looks pretty good. And it looks like I accidentally moved the layer. So I'm going to go to the select tool here. And I'm just going to click on this icon right here to recenter that. Okay, so that looks good. Now, I want to correct the exposure or try to improve it. So I'll click on Brilliance AI and it accidentally or it did a poor job and it underexposed it a little bit more, but it looks sharper here on the mountains. So let's see the before and after. So that looks pretty good, but I'm going to go to the tone and color and I'm going to increase the shadows quite a bit just to make this image look a little bit better. The sky looks blown out. So what I can do is decrease the mid tones, decrease the highlights. Let's see with the whites. I'm just going to try to balance the histogram a little bit more. Improve it and decrease the highlights. That looks pretty good. That looks good for now. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to blur out the lake just to give it a creative look. So I will go to the effects panel, click on add filter. I'm going to mask the sky. Sorry, I'm going to mask the water. So I'll click right here and then I'll click on blur. So you can see the Gaussian blur has been applied. Usually Gaussian blur is pretty good with the lakes. And I'm going to decrease the amount to about 10. That looks good. I do need to correct this mask right here. It's not masked very well. So I click on the mask right here. And right now it's on the brush tool. Feathers at 100 and it's at a race. So I'm just going to erase along here. That looks good. And just to push in this mask a little, I'm going to click on the mask tool right here to show the mask. I'm going to increase the feather. And then I'm going to push it in a little bit more. I'm going to squeeze it in more. So it selects more of the lake and less of the mountain. And that looks good. Okay, so that looks a lot better now. I'm going to select the select tool or I can press the keyboard shortcut V to remove that mask brush. And now I'm going to duplicate this layer. So I'm going to click on this icon here to duplicate the layer. You can also press control or command J as the keyboard shortcut. And now you can see the duplicated layer right here. Now I'm going to add a double contrast to this image using blend modes. And if you don't know what blend modes are, it mixes the top layer and the bottom layer and changes the composition of the light. And it's broken down into segments. So these are the dark blend modes. These are the light blend modes. These are the contrast blend modes. These are the comparison. And these are the light or the color and bright blend modes. So I'll just leave a screenshot of what on one photo raw states it is. And you can pause it just to read it. But anyways, going back to this, I'm going to select the overlay. And you can see the crazy contrast that it added. It added double contrast. So here's the before. And here's the after. Here's the before. And here's the after. One thing I can do is to make this image look a little bit more cool or more monochrome. I'm going to make sure I have this layer selected. I'm going to go to the develop tool or the develop panel and I'm going to 
decrease the saturation a little bit right here. And look how the image looks a lot better just by removing a little bit of the color. Here, here it is with a lot of color and here it is with less color. But the slight adjustment of decreasing the saturation, actually it's decreasing by minus 60. But since this is a blend mode, it's decreasing saturation very subtly. If subtly is a word. Anyways, looks pretty good now. Now let's see what we can do with this sky here. We can definitely mask it away and make some adjustments, but I do want to decrease some of this blue right here. So what I'm going to do is with this layer selected, I'm going to go to the brush or the masking tool. I'm going to click on the gradient. I'm going to use linear top. I'm just going to mask this area here and rotate it. So you can see there's less saturation here. I'm going to rotate it here. And here it is. And I'll show you how the mask is working. So that's where it's impacting. It's hiding this area right here. So you can already see the clouds. They're not as blown out. So I'll move it down here. Actually, that looks a lot better. So I will just click select the select tool to get out of that. So this image looks pretty good now. And now considering considering this area is cyan, what I can do is add a little bit red to this image right here. Add a little bit of red to the shadows. So the way I can do that is I can go to the local adjustment tool. Actually, I'll go to the effects tool. I'll click on add filter. I'll click on the curves right here. And I'll make sure I create a mask by clicking right here. And what I can do is go back to this gradient tool. It's selecting gradient mask and then I'll select vignette. And I'm going to vignette it right here. And you can see the mask right here, white reveals black conceals. So I need to invert it by clicking on this icon right here. That looks good. And I'm going to make it very narrow right here. And I'm going to make it long, narrow and long. Whoops, undo that. So I'm going to make it narrow and long. Okay, that looks a little bit better. So I have the mask ready. Let's take a look at this. Should I add a little bit more feather? Yeah, maybe a little bit more. That looks good. I'll unhide this mask. And now I'm going to just go to the red curve tool. I'm going to show you what happens when I add a little bit of cyan by decreasing it. it looks like that. Or I can increase it. And I'm just going to make a subtle adjustment with this increase. To color grade it a little bit. But now you can see I'll close this masking panel. It's a little bit harsh right here. So what I'm going to do is decrease the opacity just to make it a little bit more better and just add a little bit more color to this middle section here. Now, the other thing is I don't like how this area right here is a little dark. It's uh, dark. It should be a little bit more in focus and a little bit more brighter. So I can go to local adjustments and click on add adjustment. I have the brush tool selected. I have paint. Feather is at 100. And what I'll do is I'll just increase the size here. And I'll just brush in here. Right now it's going to make it dark, but that's okay. That's okay. So it's at negative 1 right now, the exposure. I'll reset this. And I'll increase the shadows a little bit more. Increase the shadows, add a little bit of structure. It doesn't look like it's doing much. That's fine. Haze doesn't do much, but I'll increase the shadows a little bit more. That looks good. And it's just putting a little bit more focus to this center area. So I'm going to close this mask here, select the select tool. And so what do you guys think of this image now? This is the before. This is the before and this is the after. It looks a lot better. 
with using the layers, some masking, some blur on the lake. It just looks really cool. With this photo, I'm going to show you a cool text effect. I also took this photo in Peru in the Vinicunca or Rainbow Mountain area. And I'm first going to start with this area here. I'm going to clean it up. Looks like there's a fence or some cables here. I'll go to the eraser tool. I'll make sure I'm on perfect eraser and just brush this away. Let's see if that does an okay job. Yeah, that's good enough. And now I'm going to add some Brilliance AI to correct the tone and color. It does look a little bit oversaturated, but that's fine because we're adding text to it. So I'll click on the text layer right here. And these are my previous settings. So I'm going to decrease the font right here. And I'm going to click the backspace button or the delete button on the keyboard. And I'm going to type in Peru. That looks better. I'm going to keep the size at 1000, but I need to change the, the text box. So I'm going to select here and move it. And I'm going to move this here. That looks good. I'm going to decrease it here. Move it to the center. I'll center align the text. And I'll just move it here again. And it does take a little bit playing around with. And that looks good. And I'll move it up. I'll move it up a little bit more. And the font I'm using is Impact. And this is the largest font size. It's 1000, which is fine. And then there's also the character spacing. So I will leave it at around that. And it looks like this font or this text is a little bit left aligned. So I will eyeball it and move it to the right a little bit. That looks good. Now what I want to do is add a color fill layer. So I'll click this paint bucket tool here and I'll make sure I select white and click on OK. And now you can see the white layers on top of the text layer, which is on top of the image layer. What I'm going to do is move the color layer below the text layer by left clicking on the mouse and dragging it down. I'm going to uncheck the image layer, which hides it, which doesn't matter because you can't see it, but I'm going to go to this ellipsis and I'm going to merge the visible layers. So it's going to merge these two layers. So right there. So now it's merged. I'm going to click on this image layer below to make sure it's still there, which it is. And now I'm going to choose a blend mode so I can see the image in the background. So let me see here. I think darken maybe might work or is it light and yeah, it's these ones. It's the light in ones and it looks like these do pretty much the same thing because I was using pure black as the font color. So I'll select light in. So already this image looks pretty cool. You can see the words written Peru with Vinicunca or the mountains in the background. But wait, I can actually make it a lot more cooler. So I'm going to go to the masking tool, which is right here. I'm going to go to the gradient mask. I'm going to select the linear top. And I'm going to mask down right here. That looks good. Let me make sure I can see the mask. Okay, there it is. And I will decrease it right here. Let's go here. I'm just messing around with the feather. Actually, the feather looks a lot better like this. And that looks a lot better. So the top looks cool. Now I'm going to add one at the bottom. I need to rotate it. I'm just going to rotate it. Okay, so it's a little bit finicky because I'm trying to make it parallel to the bottom. And when I click on shift, okay, there, now it aligned it. So if you shift, rotate it, it should align parallel correctly. And now I want to decrease this feathering right here. And I want to move this up just like that. I'll increase the feathering a little bit more, move it up. And now look at that. How cool does that look? What do you guys think about this? 
And the other thing I can do is I can actually paint in the sides as well. So I can go back to this brush, make sure I have the masking tool. And I have this here. And actually, yeah, I can paint it in. Let me see what the feather is. It's at 100. So that doesn't look good, actually, does it? Let me see here. Let's see what's happening. Yeah, so that looks good. That looks good. And then I can close this. I can close this and I can paint in here as well. But another way or a better thing to do is let me undo these by pressing Control or Command Z. I think I should also use the gradient tool for this as well. So the gradient mask. Click right here. I just rotate it. Just rotate it in. Like right there. Right about there. That looks good. And I'll put another one right here. Put it right here. So aligning these gradient tools can be cumbersome sometimes. Let me see if I should push this in. Yeah, I'm going to squeeze this in more, push it in. Let's see what happens or how this looks when I push it in. Wow, take a look at that. What do you guys think? Maybe it's better that I push this out a little bit and blend it in like that. Yeah, that looks good. Now this one here. Yeah, so, wow, so it looks pretty cool. Now, maybe I should adjust the top one as well a little bit more. So what do you guys think of this text effects? Do you like it? Do you want to see more tutorials like this? And if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. And as always, live easy, sleep breezy, and stay lovely.